Here we go. Good afternoon. My name is Nicole LaChapelle, and I'm the mayor of the city of East Hampton, Massachusetts, and this is my mayor's update. Here in East Hampton right now, we are doing a downtown strategic planning initiative called Plan Downtown. I've invited our city planner, Jeff Bagg, to walk us through the, the overall process of this planning uh, initiative, as well as public input, where you can get involved, how you can get involved, and the timeline of the overall process. Jeff, how are you today? I'm good, thanks good. for having thanks me. For putting up with uh, my, my many bloopers <laughs> uh, that will come out at a later date. Uh, Jeff, what's going on with uh, Plan Downtown? Great, thanks. Um, so we are fast approaching the first public meeting, uh -huh. um, which is going to be Wednesday, June 19th from 6 to 8. Okay. And it's going to be held at the Pepin Cafetorium. Okay. So, you know, it's a really important project that we initiated ab about a year ago. Um, yeah. Right after the school vote, mm -hmm. um, it became clear that the schools were going to become uh, city surplus properties. So, so in our discussions, we immediately, you know, began a process to try to start to figure out how to what to do with the schools. Mm -hmm. um, the beauty of this really is that we have three years or so to to work out um, what would end up being the potentially the highest and best use for the properties. So this is really the first opportunity for people to come to a meeting that it will be facilitated and guided through an overview of the study area, okay. um, what some of the key issues are with downtown, and then looking at what possible uses of the school properties could, could we explore going forward. Um, it, it's a three-step process, so we'll have the first meeting coming up next Wednesday. Okay. Then there's a Saturday morning session, um, July 13th from 9.30 to 11.30, we're gonna hold that at the high school cafeteria. Oh great, so the location has been determined. I it know has. for a while you weren't sure. Yep, Excellent. and then uh, the final um, version of the plan or the draft findings will be presented on October 9th. And will that be a presentation at city council, at planning, or a separate public forum that'll be announced? Right, so the October 9th will be a public forum. Okay. Um, we think we're gonna hold it at also uh, Pepin Auditorium. Okay. Um, and I think that will be, you know, it's really the planning process is something where we want as many people to come to all of these. So right. it's really important. The first session is gonna be the opportunity for people to provide their thoughts, questions, and concerns. So mm -hmm. we, we really haven't had a place for people to put all those questions and concerns yet. So the consultant that we have is going to gather all that input mm -hmm. and start to um, group them and categorize them and mm -hmm. do some basic analysis of, of costs for some of them. And those will be the ones that will come back on July 13th for people to continue to talk through. The interesting, I mean, there are several interesting parts of this process. Um, to look at past visions, current visions, but also there's a big data component of this process where uh, we have an opportunity to really pull current real-time data into this process and really set ourselves up well for three years down the road yeah. when these buildings become, become empty. Um, I would also say and encourage folks to go to the website of uh, Plan Downtown to check out uh, early visions and as well as the, the grant itself. But the three steps and just the unusual way of, of really reaching out and engaging the public. Can you just walk us through some of our graphics um, and what people can expect to see mm -hmm. uh, when they come to the public forums, but also a little bit of what it'll look like at the end, yes. at least the product. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one of the key things is that downtown is doing really well. We have a lot of positive things happening. Um, we have the Cottage Street Cultural District. We have a lot of great, cool places to go. And, you know, anecdotally, what seems to be happening is that not only visitors, but our, people who live in East Hampton are coming downtown. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot yeah. of positive momentum moving forward. Um, this project is it's big. It's going to cover a lot of different things. And yeah. so we set out to not just look at the schools, mm -hmm. the school properties in a vacuum, because it's going to relate to what else is there. So. Yeah. So we know that you know there are questions and concerns about parking, um, and that is going to be a key component mm -hmm. of data that we're going to gather. So they're going to do a parking inventory, okay. and they're going to look at public parking areas and private parking lots and on-street parking, and they're going to come up with how many spaces do we have. And part of the part of the trick is that uh, you know already people have chimed in saying you know oh, we need a parking garage. Right. 
um, and you know we need more data. Mm -hmm. We need to have a better understanding of what our current parking right. space count is, um, where parking spaces are not being utilized. So it's one it's one thing we're sitting here at 50 Payson and. On some nights, Cottage Street is is pretty jammed up, right. but this parking lot's empty. Yes. So, so as a city, we're not really employing basic parking strategies yet. Right. Um, you and I have talked. We're, we're yes. going to try to install some blue parking banners right yes. outside here, with trying to direct people down. Yeah. Um, so, so before we really get into a parking garage discussion, we have a couple other things that we can do that we're not doing currently. So, um, yep. on the back of this is a uh, is the study area map. Here, I'll hold it up. Okay. Point. There we <laughs> so, go. So, you know, this is a pretty large study area, and it, it's really mirroring what we have as a, a smart growth district. So, it starts at the top of Cottage Street here, which is where Maple Street School is. So, we're going to look at all of Cottage Street, um, up Union Street, and this is where Center Pepin is, and then it goes along Main Street to uh, the Rotary. So within that, there, there's a lot of features and things um, to explore. Union Street is going to be reconstructed in 2022, 2023. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a big factor for the consultants to um, understand what that will look like right. um, that's funded. So that will be happening. And how can that interact with potential reuses at Center Pepin? Um, economic development tools are another thing that um, there's a market study, so so we see a lot of changes happening, mm -hmm. but they're relatively gradual. There are right. new businesses coming. Um, we have one project that's going to be the redevelopment of Jim's Package Store, so yes. it's approved a couple of years ago. Um, so this is really an important time for us to start looking ahead. Um, where, where the master plan has given us so much guidance in other areas, right. when we look at the downtown, there's really no there's no course. There's no plans that we have um, with mm -hmm. strategies to accomplish. So the where we've been really successful is right. the state has funding for certain projects if, if it's based on a plan and some strategies. And so that's really what we're setting out to do. And we've seen those fe uh, feasibility grants be very helpful to leverage for bigger for bigger grant money and, and project. I mean, one of, and, and you've mentioned it a little bit, but it, this, while, this initiative is happening right now, it seems to uh, take into effect a lot of, I would say, background elements, like the Cottage Street development that was approved a couple of, of years ago. But mm -hmm. will, will this also uh, take into consideration the effects of Union Street once it's completed in 2023? I mean, um, is the focus just in the right now, or, or how far out will it go? I, I noticed that we're including East Hampton City Arts, which just got that great grant uh, to put the elevator on. Um, how much forward or how many pieces is this going to consider? Yeah, so I think we have the consultant team is uh, Harriman. They have architects, they have urban planners, and they have um, you know traffic consultants and yeah. parking consultants. So <clears throat> what, what I desire to get out of this with the community input is some short-term strategies that we can accomplish mm -hmm. sort of low-hanging fruit okay. is always important and so that like the parking banners is one of those ideas right. that is relatively inexpensive and it's okay. next year or two right um, we look at three years out which is when we'll have a brand new Union Street uh, mm -hmm. the projections for for city yeah. space and Old Town yeah. Hall is that that space will be right. um, revitalized at that point mm -hmm. um, and we'll have a new building on Cottage Street and then we'll be we'll be poised to have these three school properties mm -hmm. go onto the market or or be changed in use. So, so that's three years out. And then, I mean, where we really want to be is looking five or ten years after that. Right. So, so that's all within the realm of this project is to explore right. the next 10, 10, 12 years and come up with some strategies. So, for public input mm -hmm. around those strategies and giving this process direction that is based in the community. What's the date of our next public forum on this? Yep, so the first one's next Wednesday, okay. June 19th at Pepin, it's at, from 6 to 8. So we have okay. this on our website. Yep. Um, for those folks who may be on Facebook, we the planning department has a very active Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And you know, in this day and age, I've really found that um, getting people's attention is kind of like an extreme sport. Mm -hmm. um, the, it's very challenging to get yeah. a lot of competition this information out to right. everybody who, who should be here, but I would just beg for people to come. 
Um, lots of people on Facebook have given sort of one-off ideas. Right. And we will look at them, but to really be engaged, um, yeah. it's going to be more than just saying, you know, provide some community space. Mm -hmm. What what people really need to try to do is follow this three-step process, right. so so they can understand are there pros and cons to that, are there costs, um, and then you know, we have a big parking question. Right. Um, whether we have a parking problem is not clear yet, but the 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 biggest ideas I've heard so far are get rid of the schools and build parking. Mm -hmm. And so you know that that's going to be a hot button issue right. to, to explore that. The consultant has been asked to provide us maps. So if you look at Maple Street, for example, a map of the property with the building, mm -hmm. what could it look like if there was parking wrapped around it? Right. You know, if we put housing in Maple, how mm -hmm. many parking spaces would that need? And they will be asked to, to, to have a clean slate of that property and figure out what other options might exist going I forward. Mean, this initiative really takes the anecdotal success of downtown and that excitement and quantifies it to what will work uh, not just in the next six months or three years, if I understand you correctly, but going forward and what we can expect from the general economy, yeah. but also what the actual housing need and parking need based on data and research will direct us forward. Yeah. I mean, I would hate to have us spend dollars twice or someone put together um, a great idea and then not having the information they can get on these sessions around, oh, maybe we don't need parking as much as I thought because X, Y, or Z is happening on Union Street. I mean, it really does give a complete set, a, a com more complete picture and, and a, a set of data that maybe somebody went off on Facebook or having a conversation at a subcommittee meeting here in City Hall might not have all of that at their disposal. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is a big project. So having three years to, yeah. to explore is, is perfect. It's great. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's such an opportunity for East Hampton that we have these three properties right. that the city owns and we have three years to work through mm -hmm. You know iterations of what might be best. I mean, right. you know, there's been criticisms of other properties. So, you know, uh, other school property, Parsons Street in particular. I don't. I wasn't here, but I don't know the background of that. But there wasn't a lot of time right. to prepare for the best no, and different quick. uses for. So okay. we have a really unique opportunity to to use this project as the foundation. Mm -hmm. Um, and I do want to be clear that it will not solve all the problems. It's probably going to create a more concise list. Mm -hmm. um, so within the three years, we will be doing more explore, exploration of things to get to that final product in a couple of years. Absolutely. So, so it's not going to be the, the final solution. It's really mm -hmm. the beginning of the process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, just I'll put a plug yes. in for the website is Plan Downtown. Dash East Hampton. Okay. Um, so that's up, and that's where all the information will go. Uh, okay. There is a presentation on there now, and there'll be another one after following next Wednesday. Mm -hmm. um, so we're really excited about this. Excellent. Well, thank you for joining us today. And of course, the question has to be asked: Jeff, what did you have for breakfast? <clears throat> well, today I had some Cheerios what? and banana, of course. So and banana. Okay. Just I was taken aback. <laughs> thank you very much for tuning in. Please join us at the public forum. It's going to be Wednesday, June 19th, 6 to 8, at uh, Center Prep and School in the... Cafetorium. Cafetorium. <laughs> uh, everyone is welcome. Have a great week. Take care.